Hi everyone and welcome back. It's been a while, but it's now yeah. series three, episode one of uh, Chatter About the Chatter uh, at Monkey Mind Relaxation. I'm all about the monkey mind, uh, but today we're going to be talking with today's guest all the way from the United States of America. We have Amanda. Hello. Hello. I see the little <laughs> sheep. I saw that. I saw that. That was very nice, Amanda. So you're from Manifest Your Life. Um, I'm going to let you do a lot of the talking because I, I just enjoyed our little pre-chat before we've gone live with the uh, show. Um, <laughs> but we have a lot to share, I believe, Amanda. But please, yes. introduce yourself. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Amanda, as uh, but I go by AK Marie. Uh, so feel free to call me either one. Either one is fine. Um, I have a show called Manifest Your Life, and we kind of we kind of get down to the nitty gritty of what that looks like, the good, the bad, and how to use all of it. Um, and I'm transparent in my journey as well, as well as you can ask me actual questions, and I actually answer that. Um, and there's other people in the group as well that may answer or share it light. So it's always good to uh, broaden your perspective. Um, on any situation that way that way you can find an easier way to get out of it or transform it or transmute it for yourself as well as I am an astrologer um, I've been in astrologer for about about a while now um, and I love it I think it's a tool that everyone should definitely take a time and look at um, it doesn't quite predict the future but it definitely tells you what your core is um, what all the energies was uh, were at at the time of your birth to tell you a little bit about yourself is a little bit uh, mind-blowing when you start going through it like wait 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 how do you know all that <laughs> Uh, but it's so intriguing because things that you may have thought about for yourself or was curious, wanted to do, why do I have this urge? You will see that it was always there for you to do. So it kind of makes manifesting your life a little bit easier. It helps you accept who you are and allows for you to kind of navigate life a little bit differently. And that's the cool part about astrology. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned that because I was going to go, I don't know a minute, if, if we're predestined from birth, how can we manifest? So I'm glad you kind of touched on that, but we'll go a little bit deeper into that. First yes. of all, thank you for being on Chatter About the Chatter. Um, I, I'm Cuddy, the host of this show. Uh, yeah. And Amanda, it's great to have you. And I mean that sincerely. I know how we met. Um, and it was like, it was an instant vibe. like, right, you know, we've got to do a podcast together. So look, a lot of the podcasts that I have done, there's a lot of woo-woo. Yes. And I think we're all... In, in the genre and the space that we are is we, a lot of people understand that woo-woo works. Yeah, unfortunately. It, it, <laughs> no, it's not unfortunately. It's fortunately. It means it that- It is fortunately. Other, absolutely. It's, it means that there's other options for us yeah. to go through to get us out of those downward spirals that we can offer for, often find ourselves in. I found myself in it. I know you, I will share your story about you finding yourself in those downward spirals and when when we're doing these podcasts, we're doing, we're hoping to get that information out to so anyone that's listening. If they're just skipping through whatever podcast search engine you're going through, something just clicks and you're like, oh, wow. So I don't have to stay where I am. If that place that you are right now is not a place of happiness, of joy, of comfort, of abundance and frivolity, I love that word frivolity, then there is options for you to make those changes. And that's why we have all this free content. Uh, and manifesting, and we did touch on it in the pre-chat, and I think a little bit in the conversation, we will touch into it a little bit more, but explain manifesting for anyone that doesn't know about manifesting, Amanda. Uh, manifesting is really your mind, whatever you're thinking about, whatever is kind of going in your mind, uh, what you consistently talk to yourself about, um, or even talk to other people about, it's kind of what you're attracting towards you. It's like that law of attraction. Whatever you put out there tends to come back to you, which you're kind of sewing comes back to you. So that goes for the good and the bad. So if you're constantly thinking about uh, negative things or this is going to happen to me and this is, oh, I can't go here because that will happen. Uh, no, it's, it just might because you're thinking about it just so you're thinking about it so much. It can't help but to come to you. Um, so it's same way with thinking positive about yourself. Um, but you it's still finding a balance between the two because uh, it's not a it's, it's not a make a wish and then all of a sudden poofs because there is work behind manifesting <laughs> oh you you uh, you know i think one of the the, the the good things i heard about law of attraction is there's law there's no law of attraction without taking action correct 
And I've seen people do 21 day manifestation challenges. And I think it's always really well worded. It's like, look, if you're going to sit here and just think you're going to rub a genie yeah. and you're going to create a million pounds, <laughs> that's not how the law no. of attraction works in any way. You have to have a thought. You have to take action on that thought. And you have to take inspired action. Yes. Inspired action. And and trust me, I'm a massive believer in, in manifestation. Yeah. I have, for the many, many years, been doing it. Uh, and, I, and I love it. And I yeah. love it. But I know there's always that critique side of, well, and we talked about this before, so we can we can touch into it now, is, yeah. you know, a child that's in poverty. Yeah. If there's a child in poverty, how can you, you know, as, as a person who's as experienced in manifestation and law of attraction, um, how how do you say to that child, well, you've manifested that, you've you've brought that upon upon yourself? What's what's the, your take on that, Amanda? Um, I think when it comes to if I'm talking to the child, yeah, um, because f- for one, the child is manifesting that because they're in a position. Um, that that's what surrounds them. They yeah. don't see any other possibility. So they're constantly thinking this and then they're starting to do behaviors that supports that thought. Yeah. Um, what I would tell that child is, look, let's try something different. <laughs> um, let's let's see if we think of things differently. If we, if we tap into, uh, uh, you know, meditation or prayer, Let's write out some things. Let's release uh, certain ways that you're feeling. Let's kind of dig in deep with that child or, and just show them life can be different because we've seen plenty of, we've heard plenty of stories. We've seen plenty of movies where it took someone to kind of be that hero in that child's life and show them the possibilities of something different. And when the child saw something different, that's what they held on to. And then everything else became insignificant. Like, I don't have to deal with this. I don't have to do this. But it was only when they saw the possibility of something different that allowed for them to do it. So for that child, I would I would strive and give them intentions and try to help them to start to see things differently because that's the only way that they can even change the situation. And but and they can start to believe, you know what, I can manifest stuff because I did say I wanted to do that. And then I started to do that and it came. And then it just takes one time. It's like once once you recognize and you are aware that it happened, yeah. it becomes contagious. You yeah. start to move in intentions all the time. As contagious <laughs> as your smile. If, uh, if you don't mind my face, Thank so, you. I, 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 you know, to echo something that you've said there, I think one of the the things that I always remember, and it was, it was something in myself as well, is your, the teacher will appear when you're ready to listen. Yes. And Absolutely. I think that comes from Buddhism because it was always the thing about Buddha. You weren't ready. You wouldn't hear Buddha until you were ready. Right. And it's an old chant of the the flower doesn't open until Buddha comes along. <laughs> and that's where that that premise of that saying, and it's. It's one of the hardest parts of, I've got friends who struggle and suffer. They know what I do for a living and they know that yeah. I'm a, a mind management coach and I help people past anxiety, depression, emotions, uh, you know, that, that negative thinking, um, overthinking, constant overthinking, as I yeah. used to do a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. I always have to remember, remind myself as, as the pain that they are in right now, they're just not ready, unfortunately. Yeah. It, they're just not ready and it's i always find it's it's until the pain of moving forward is going to hurt less than the pain of moving uh, staying where you are exactly and that's that's the thing of like yep yeah, do you know what they've, they've just not they've not hit rock bottom yet they still think that what they're doing is 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 acceptable and and, and good for them at the moment but it's not but it's never our place to, to place that judgment on them no 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 you can drive yourself nuts trying to force someone to do something and the only thing that will happen is you you go <laughs> and they'll still think the same way all the talking everything that you could have done if they're not ready for it they're just not ready for it yeah so give me some examples of the things that you've manifested into your life amanda <sighs> oh look at the smile there's a massive list already i can tell you know what I want to say the very first thing that I recognized that I manifested was when I said I wanted to change. I said that I I didn't want to, I didn't feel like I was living a fulfilled life. 
And I wanted to live a life that was worth living because I knew what I deserved and I knew what I wanted to do. And the situation that I was in was not supporting that in any way. And it was like, the more that I thought about it, <laughs> the more things broke. <laughs> <laughs> the more things left me, the more things that it was like, wait, 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 but I love them. Wait, wait, wait. I had that. I, I used to work at FedEx. I worked at FedEx for 15 years. And I used to, I would have never, like me personally, I was on a track of, I was trying to be a VP. <laughs> like that was my mindset. I'm going to be a VP. So I'm like doing everything. I went from ground to FedEx. I mean, from ground to office to back to ground to sales. So, but at the same time, I knew. I was limiting myself and I wanted to do more. Um, so yeah, that 15 year career out the door, relationship out the door, <laughs> even where I live out the door, everything literally <laughs> broke change. Uh, but what I will say is after everything broke and everything in the dust started to settle, boy, was I in love with myself and the things that I was doing. I took so many chances on myself. Um, I have, you know, plenty of clients that I've never thought that I would have. So even being here with you right now, Cuddy, is manifesting <laughs> because it's like, I would have never thought that I would have done that. At least put myself out there and said, hey, let me talk to, you know, <laughs> let me share my story. Let me tell people who I'm about um, and let's connect with someone overseas, right? Over in London. Like I'm sitting here in Texas, like, wow. So when I tell people I have friends globally, I literally mean that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the cool, coolest thing about it. Like that, and that's like the biggest manifestation is knowing that I deserve more. And the more that I thought about the things that I would do, like I said, the more things started to break and move out the way. And as much as I thought it should have been there, I was open to allow for the things to change and learned literally as much as I could. Yeah, <laughs> of why it was breaking. So, what was your, let's call it your superhero moment? The person that that, what was your origin story then? What was the final straw that was like? Do you know what? This is just not the life I'm supposed to be living. Was it after the 15 years at FedEx, or was it during the 15 years? What was it that you realized? Oh my God, I'm creating all this 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 bad karma myself. Um. I think really it was after I had my last child. Right. Um, I had my, I have four daughters. So after I had my last daughter, it was something about that, that I really wanted to get back to me. I was like walking at work and I just heard it's time to get back to yourself. And it was just weird. Cause it was like, hmm. <laughs> but it was just like, it's something about it just I found comfort in it. And I literally, I used to be 286 pounds. Wow. And within that, after I heard that, I started working out. There was a gym inside of our, uh, that no one used at our job. <laughs> I was literally the only person in there every single day that I could. Um, but that was, that was the moment. It, I think that was the moment that was like, I can. And when I started to do the workout and I started to like slim down, that's when I knew like, this can change. Um, but I still had like a struggle, but what the straw that broke the camel's back, I'm gonna be honest with you. It was losing my father. Right. It was losing my father. And that was the moment that he, he raised me. He did everything. So it was like, wait, <laughs> like my safety net literally just got pulled from up under me. Yeah. And it was like, where well, if you said that you wanted to live this life, if you said you felt like you deserve all of this, you have nothing but to do it now. Yeah. That was the moment. That was the moment when I was like, I've been creating and like even going through that process, it was like, I'm, I was the person that was keeping me down. Like I was literally putting that responsibility on other people, but I, I started to learn why. And that's so what <laughs> what what popped up? What was your teaching moment that you were ready to learn? Who popped up that, that introduced manifestation to you? Oh, that was a deep sigh. Yeah, I always say 
so after I left FedEx, um, I actually had a reading, uh, my very first first reading uh, with a lady named Ava uh, Aya. Um, and she was stuck. It was like the pandemic hit and she was stuck in Peru. <laughs> And I was like up one night and I was like, I don't even know how I found it. I don't even know the the app that I use at the time, but somehow I found her. And she, she, she read, she read me. She, you know, looked at my birth chart. She did the natal chart reading. Um, she pulled a couple of cards. Um, but by the end of that, uh, she kind of told me like I lost my voice. And so she was telling me, you know, even with, my uh um so a little bit of astrology there's it's broken down in 12 houses every house represents something and in my house of where i'm a libra um my son sign uh is in the house of communication so she was saying your your if your throat chakra is blocked <laughs> how are you communicating how are you even talking how are you expressing yourself and so she did a long distance reiki <laughs> wow. um, which I've never experienced. So this is like a first of everything. Um, but I, when I woke up, when I tell you, I couldn't stop talking. <laughs> ah! I couldn't. And I was like, I had to express myself. Everything needed. It's like, I wasn't afraid to express myself. I didn't even realize it was blocked. Um, and as I go through my journey, I learned even more of why it was blocked. And I dealt with those things. Wow. So that was, that was like my, I want to say my teacher, because she was the one who stressed of me needing to speak out. She stressed uh, the blockage. She stressed, like, if you said that your family can help you, why not go get the help? And if you feel like you're in this, why is that? And, and I was like, yeah, you're right. Why is that? Why am I doing that? What? <laughs> So it was really having that conversation. And really, I want to say I, after her, I didn't, I went to the traditional therapy after that. And I want to say all of them, they all provoked me to be curious. They asked me these particular questions that got me in my head of like, well, how am I doing that? <laughs> <laughs> that makes no sense. Why am I putting myself through that? Like I, I, I can change it. But then, you know, the question became if how do I change it? It was it, that became the thing of how, um, and so I started to really. Uh, that's when everything started to break and move. But I knew one thing: curiosity does. The curiosity doesn't kill the cat. They actually, the satisfaction <laughs> brought it back, right? <laughs> satisfaction definitely brought it back, um, and and it. I couldn't help but to start learning. It just. I started to see the signs. Yeah. I started to be more aware of who I was what I was doing, what I was thinking, and just really started to uh, really gravitate towards me. Wow. Powerful. <laughs> so let's talk astrology, because that's that's a phenomenal story. I'm sure that's going to yes. resonate with, with so many people and things like that. Um, and I, Do you know, I was thinking about how I first found out about manifestation. I don't know if it was Tony Robbins. Was it Tony Robbins? I got into Tony Robbins quite a lot. Uh, way back in the day, because I, th I think my journey probably started about. Actually, I did. I found out about the secret. It was the secret. Oh yes. Somebody said, "Oh, one. you've got to do the secret." What's the secret? And I downloaded it. I downloaded it because it was American thing. It wasn't out in the United Kingdom. Uh, and I I watched it and I was like, "Oh, that's that was a lovely movie." I was like, "Well, it's not the worst idea, is it? Really, just you know, <laughs> positive out." I was like. <laughs> We went through it. My wife watched it. And she went, it's a bit culty, that, isn't it? I was like, yeah, it's a bit culty. I get that. A little bit of a... <laughs> right? Because that's what you do. Yes, that's it does. That's, the, that's the, the fear. And my wife was like, oh, I'm not doing that. I went, do you know what? I'm going to do a vision board. She went, what? I went, look, you can't actually hurt doing a vision board. And I put it on my fridge because I was always near the fridge. I still am. And... <laughs> I wanted a job on a cruise ships. I wanted to work as a cruise director for, for Royal Caribbean. That's that's what I wanted to do. So I did my vision board um, and I was working in entertainment and I was like, well, I knew I'd got some contacts. So I went and made some contacts over there and went, oh, your brother works at Royal Caribbean. Could you think he could get my CV into the, the person? Yeah, yeah, not a problem. 
And I got the job for Royal Caribbean. I got the job. And then I worked my way up and got cruise director. And, and to this day, I'm like, it was manifestation. It was it was one of yeah. the vision boards. Absolutely. Absolutely. Was, I did Absolutely. Even the interview, I was like, I wasn't even stressed about the interview. I'm like, no, I've got it because it's on my vision board. It's fine. It's fine. I've already got it. <laughs> right? I already, I I've already it. confirmed. I know. Yeah. It's a true story. I and love then, it. And then I wanted to, so then that's when I, um, I started manif manifesting mind management, being a mind management coach and becoming the UK's leading mind management coach. And yeah. it's all manifestation, it's all taking action yeah. on, on the things that you want. And I, I do believe in manifestation. I think it's yes. fantastic. Now, let's talk astrology, because that's yes. that's also a part of what you do. Yes. Now, we talked about this before. Actually, astrology has lost its power a little bit, but way okay. back in the day, astrology was the science of yeah. the gods, of the people. It was, and I, I, I'm i going to reference your quote. Yeah, it, the stars was the social media of the dark. <laughs> that, yes. That's a beautiful quote. That's a beautiful <laughs> thing. I love that. Because they had nothing else to do apart from look at the sky. Right, exactly. But it was actual science. It was legit way back it in were. the day. They had nothing else. There was it was only astrology, and I think astrology has been watered down a little bit by yeah. um, people doing in the newspapers, or if yeah. you're a Cancer, or if you're a Capricorn, this is and they, it's just cold reading. I think that's what gets watered down. But I, when I was talking to you before we did the show, I was like, no, this is serious with it with, with <laughs> astrology. This is a whole different level, and I wanted to talk about your astrology because that was phenomenal. Oh yes, uh, uh, astrology. Like my love for astrology, um, when I look back, when I realized it started when I was a kid, I used to be whenever something happened, I would be the person that would, and it was awesome. My parents let me, <laughs> but I would be on the porch for hours at night and just watching the stars and the moon um, and getting this connection and uh, getting to a point to know, uh, even in my self-discovery of who I am and what I wanted to do. And like I said, talking, like I didn't even know that that was just a strong point within myself. And I'm like, okay. Um, but astrology, like you said, it is a science. It's what everybody uses underneath and don't really talk about it. Yep. It's one of those things, Albert Einstein said, if your uh, physician doesn't know astrology, get you a new one. <laughs> um, JP Morgan um, over in, uh, I don't know if he has anything over in uh, overseas, but it's a bank over here. Yeah, um, but yeah, JP Morgan, he said the difference between a millionaire and a billionaire is that the billionaire knows astrology. Um, and those are some heavy quotes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> some knowledge bombs there. Yes. Yes. That tells you the significance of just astrology. Like it moves you even when you don't know that it's moving you. Like the energies in the air is if you know that it's happening, you can use with you can use it with intentions and prepare yourself forward. If you don't know that it's happening, then you can get yourself stuck and in, intertwined and in trying to figure out <laughs> following your tail. Um, so like, for instance, I always like to tell people like right now, you know, Saturn is in retrograde and Saturn is definitely about structure. It's about forming something. What is the policies like? What are you aiming for? Uh, what goals are you trying to do? And it's a great time with it being in retrograde means let me go inside. And you probably, if you sit back and look at your life right now, there may be some things that are part of your foundation that is being shifted, that's being moved, that's breaking, that's changing. And if you don't know that it's happening for a particular reason, then you're liable <laughs> to fall in a downward state and feel like, why is this happening to me? I need this. I need that. And it's like, no, it's time to move forward. I'm trying to change some stuff and it's time to go. So build that up, see what serves you, see how to redo it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prepare you for it when, time is, uh, when it's time. If you don't, you're going to get left behind. And you're going to be like, and they talk about that window of opportunity. Here's a window of opportunity. What new structure are you going to do for yourself? Like even for you and I, like, again, I can't stress, like even me saying, I'm about to manifest my life. 
here's a great time to see what's the foundation of my business? What's working for me? What's not? What can I add to it? What can I leave? And I'm telling you, I know, come because it goes in direct October 23rd. So I, I'm more than sure the closer it gets to that time, the stronger I feel within my own business, the stronger I feel like, oh, great. That needs to be there. People that I'm meeting like, oh, <laughs> I need that person because <laughs> I was just saying that I needed to do, you know, I need to do X, Y, Z. It's opening that door. Yeah. So it's allowing me to see that. And that's how powerful astrology is. And that's just literally one small planet. Like that's just Saturn. That's, that's it. I haven't even talked about all the other planets. Like there's so much more that you can go into and your chart is broken down into 12, uh, 12 areas of your life. And within those areas of your life, depending on where it is, that's where it affects you at. So when you were saying like the, um, um, it being watered down, yes, because they're grouping people into one lump sum when we are all the signs, we are all the planets, but it's the conversation that these planets are having amongst, uh, amongst each other that affects you in a particular special way. No, oh, wow. <laughs> I, I want to read. I, even now I'm sat here thinking I wanted to, I want to read me. I want I want me, I want to tell her when I was born. Uh, and I want to, I want, cause I, 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 I bet you'd nail it on the head. You'd be like, yeah, that is you. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I know I'm cancer. Okay. Into is it Leo? I think Leo, because I'm 24th of June. 24th of June would make you a Leo. No. No, no, no. I take that back. My it's apologies. Two days that away. makes you a full cancer. cancer. Into Leo, yeah. Because, yeah, that's a cancer. Yeah. You're definitely a cancer because it's uh, Leo doesn't start until uh, July yeah. 21st. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm cancer into, 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 uh, to Leo. Uh, and I um I was born in 1977. Okay. And I'm I'm just so intrigued now that you have <laughs> to get you have to get back in contact and tell me. You have to tell me. Yes, I would need your time of birth. Oh. So, so here's the here's the thing with what because a afternoon. <laughs> yeah, because the uh, uh you can give the time. I mean, you can give uh the uh your day of birth but that will only show you where the planets were particularly at and what signs. When you give the time, it will tell you exactly in what areas of your life they show up in. Ooh. So when you have everything, you can learn a lot. <laughs> but yes, I definitely, I would, I would definitely look that up for you. And I get, you, I get all in the nitty gritty. <laughs> I found out a lot <laughs> and I'll tell you. <laughs> So, uh, what what is it you do? Because you're into, you're a graphic designer as well. Yes. Yes, uh, and I love the, the the backdrop that you've got for you. I love that backdrop; it's lovely. Thank um, you. I'm like Max Headroom, stuck in the eighties with my backdrop. Uh, to be honest. <laughs> I love it though. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what what is it you do now? Because uh, you are a transformational coach who uses astrology with your clients. Yes. Um, and and what does that mean for your clients? Um, I'm going to help you transform your mindset. Kind of along the lines, it's, it's helping you with your mindset because it's really, that's really the soul. <laughs> if you could change how you think about some things, um, boy, can you see the possibilities and um, greatness within your life and using the good and bad because we never lose. It's always a lesson to be greater. Yeah. That's all that it is. Uh, so that transformational and just using astrology is just identifying uh, what makes you strong, identifying those areas like, oh, OK, I can see where this could be in an opposition. I can see where you could find balance in your life because that's what life is, a consistency of finding balance. And so with astrology and being that transformational coach, I put those things together because I want to know who you are. I want to know who you are at your core. And it allows for me to, okay, navigate. Oh, okay, I can see. Because like, with you being a cancer, I know for you that home life is important to you, that your family and those people uh, uh, that you care about and you nurture, that's important to you. Um, so that's, that's why I get it. frustrated when I can't nurture the family. You said what? 
Is that why I get frustrated when I can't nurture the family? Correct. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. When they Absolutely. don't want to be nurtured, uh, I get very frustrated because I'm like, you, yeah, okay, that's good. I like that. Very, <laughs> yeah, very, yeah, bang on. Yeah. yeah exactly but see and then that lets me know so if a person is very uh uh but my family needs me here and there i can easily say okay i can see where other placements within your chart and say okay i see that your family is a very big important part of you but have you also been pulled and led to do this as well mm -hmm. um maybe you're trying to be a little bit more creative Mm -hmm. um, maybe you have a lot of heavy placement in your area of relationships and it's just about dealing with those. Maybe mm -hmm. the planets are in conjunction and they're not speaking well together. So it's like with astrology, you get a chance to actually see that story being weaved in and weaved out to better help someone transform who they are. Cause I firsthand, it did it for me. It did it for me firsthand. So it's like, I'll try any and everything that I'll do for someone else. I've tried firsthand to make sure that it actually works. So when I, when I speak, I'm speaking from, from a full hundred percent of just, yep, I tried it <laughs> from experience. I know what you're going through. It seems, it seems like, how could that be? Uh, but it's possible. Um, and it's, and I also try to make sure they see, um, and I like to say that uh, it's, your mind is like a gym. Like, oh, it's a muscle, right? So you yeah. have to constantly take it to the gym in order to work it out. And if you know what weights that you need to start off with, then you can build from there. So taking that astrology is giving you this that that core, that foundation of where the weights are. Yeah. And then we can build from there. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> Honestly, I've loved this chat. Thank you so much. Yes. Is Thank there you. anything else you would like uh, like to share with 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 everyone here at uh, the chatter about the chatter, uh, monkey mind relaxation? Tell me, tell me what else you would like to share with them. Some little nuggets for them. Uh, my first one: join me, manifest your life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you're on Instagram, I am awaken your divine uh, power, um, and you can also find manifest your life on Facebook as well. I mean, and that's just how you sign up. It's a very private uh, conversation amongst just whoever's there. I record it in a sense of for me to learn um, areas. So I, I always like to improve. So that's the only reason why you would see me record it is particularly for me. Um, so just know that. Um, but next, I would like to say is if you have never gotten a chance to um, had a natal chart reading, I encourage you to get one. I am available for that as well. But there's so many people that's also out there that you can get to. Um, but I, I encourage everyone because like I said, it's, it's no, the more aware that you are, the better that you can make the changes that you want, the better that you can live a life with intentions. Um, I think we get lost in the day to day. And uh, it's really, it's not really about the stuff that the world makes you think is important. Um, and I feel like, you know, if you listen to your spirit, funny thing, I used to, as I was growing up, I used to hear stuff in my head all the time. And I'd be like, well, who is that? <laughs> right? You used to think that you're, I used to think that I was crazy. And people will always tell you, don't talk to yourself um, because then you're crazy. Um, and actually, that's not true. Nope. Talk to yourself as much as possible. Yeah, sometimes I get the best answers. <laughs> for myself yeah <laughs> yes absolutely so talk to yourself um and, and learn yourself and trust yourself because the better you can be aware the better you can trust that voice that you're hearing and you can start to find a balance between your ego and your spirit because neither one should fully take over it should be a balance and that's you the body the balance absolutely. to find it <laughs> ego i know it was it's believe it or not it's always ego that i'm dealing with when i'm when, when i'm with work with clients and if, if anyone's not aware of what ego is and how ego really doesn't turn up well in your life <laughs> if you're the kind of person that says i'm I, I you would rather be right than happy that means you are ego in in force you're, you're you and that comes from a place of insecurity yeah 
So that's, and a lot of people, no, it's not, no, it is. It comes from a place of insecurity. Ego will always play to insecurity and a lack of confidence. And that's mindset, growth mindset for a fixed mindset, all those kind of things, however you want to have it described. And it comes from your monkey mind. So if your conversations with yourself are not blessed and are not sensical and are not helping you to move forward, then absolutely speak to somebody because hearing voices and having conversations is two different things. Yeah, that is true. And a lot of people, the amount of times I have people, oh, but I've got this conversation. Yeah, it's not. It doesn't mean to say that you are (laughs) bipolar or schizophrenic or anything like that. We all have conversations with ourselves. And we can train that monkey mind, that chatter. That's why the whole podcast is called Chatter About the Chatter. <laughs> that chatter is not empowering you forward. Yeah. Then find someone, speak to someone. And do you know yeah. what? I was having a conversation with myself today. Uh, and I was having a conversation of why have I been so successful? Because that's a powerful conversation to have with yes. yourself. Is to, to understand that if anybody ever asked me in, 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 in those situations, well, why have you been so successful? It's simple. You follow the nuggets of the people who are successful. Yeah. And I, I remember this, the, if going through all the gurus and the life coaches and successful people, I could rattle off one sentence from every one of them that triggered something in me. So yes. I always remember for, for Tony Robbins, it was, what is it? What if your worst day was actually your best day? Yeah. And that's what made me overcome my, um, uh, nervous breakdown that I had years ago. That that's what it was, and that was the one thing that made the change. I heard I heard Jay Shetty once say um, he got down to his last three thousand dollars, and then he made it, you know, uh, in, into the success and things like that. And I've always had that in the background, thinking, right, I'll keep going until I've got three thousand pounds. <laughs> then I'm gonna have to do something else because Jay Shetty didn't. But it worked. I was like, well, yeah, I keep it, keep an eye on the finances and things like that. And then boom, we started making those that, those directions go. Uh, I always remember Eckhart Tolle. Have you ever listened to Eckhart Tolle or read Eckhart Tolle? Anything by Eckhart Tolle, Amanda? Yes, I have. I I watched that whole series that he did uh, with Oprah. Um, I I, I was like addicted to it when I was in sales. It was like my radio. I would just listen to it and listen to it one episode after the next until it was all done. And I think I've gone back (laughs) a couple of times. But yes, Eckhart Tolle is good. And there's always, and, and to anyone that's listening to these podcasts, there's so much information out there for you to just hopefully, it, it sparks that ignition of yeah. change. That's exactly. what we're hoping for. And Amanda, you've sparked change today, and I appreciate that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Not a problem. You genuinely did, Amanda. Thank you very much. Uh, and I will finish off with saying uh, total gratitude, because it was a lovely conversation. Yes, I agree. I agree. I'm thankful for you. Like, <laughs> and I know we I'm met. I'm, I'm very, very grateful for you having me on. I'm grateful for even meeting you. I'm grateful that the universe allowed for us to meet uh, because I, I believe that day um, I wasn't going to get on. Um, and I ended up saying, no, actually, I can get on today. And I got on and, and I listened to you and I was like, I like him. <laughs> <laughs> It's a lot of fun. I uh, like him. <laughs> no, it was and it was a lovely it was a lovely lecture uh, that night that we did with yes. Orlando and stuff like that. And as far as I remember, I know I don't want to rattle on too long, but a lot of people said, "Oh, it's the first time Orlando's not talked." Because I was doing all the talking, which was quite funny. But I do because I'm always the one doing podcasts and the one that's listening. If I ever get invited, I'm like, "You what? Be careful because I want to show up for an hour." Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so with you I'm a chatterbox I'm like don't get me to go, I will go. <laughs> honestly Amanda thank you so much for coming uh, check out the other podcasts of Monkey Mind Relaxation available on Anchor and Spotify as always big love from Cuddy and I'm sure that Amanda wants to say big love too yes big thank love Cuddy yeah. absolutely <laughs> Uh, check her out. I'll put the details uh, on all the uh, the uh, outside uh, the the media that we're going to do, so that you can follow and you can find Amanda wherever in the world that she is. Big love from Cuddy. Chatter about the chatter out, and we will see you in the next episode of Chatter about the chatter. <laughs>